Uh, karibuni uh, ndugu zangu kwenye seminari hiyo leo nita allow dakika chache kama kuna yoyote ambaye atakuwa na join waweze ku join uh, ili tuweze kuanza uh, kama mtu yeyote atakuwa na ana issue nitaomba uh, unaweza uka raise issue yako kwenye kwenye chat alafu tukifika kwenye Q&A of course nita, nita kama kuna mtu anataka kuongea basi nita un, 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 unmute nitauliza swali au kama unataka kushare in experience uh, tutaenda kwa namna hiyo um, i believe tuko kiko boto ingo kutosha ya kuni allow kuanza i don't know for some reason ni, nilikuwa sitaki watu wawe kwenye waiting room waingie tu moja kwa moja i don't know why ii function inanishinda sitaki watu wake kwenye waiting room na waweze ku, ku, ku log in moja kwa moja anyway uh, nitaendelea ku admit as they as they come as they come through Uh, sijui usikie nika naongea hapa niko peke yangu tupo mpo okay good uh, kwa mnanisikia vizuri naam nasikika vizuri alhamdulillah okay great yeah uh, na kwa ruhusa yenu nita record hii session ya leo kwa wale ambao probably hawata kwa hataweza ku join Uh, mzee tukao tumia tu link wakasikiliza the on time. Uh, so kama utakuwa part of 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 the recording naomba ruhusa yako kabisa with your consent sio tukapekana mahakamani kama nimekurekodi bila idhini yako. Ah uh, mtu ananiambia nasikika kwa chini nasikika kwa chini sana. napata feedback kabla sijaendelea. Nasikika vizuri jamani. Unasikika vizuri labda sawa tu labda ongeze ya sauti hadi basi yake. Okay, labda itakuwa ni yeye. Unasikika vizuri. Okay, okay, asante. Basi yule ambaye ananisikia ana, ana ni mbona mtu anasema anasikika na, nasikika kwa chini. Nafikiri brother Molana please uh, jaribu kuongeza sauti upande wako. Probably is is on your part. Lakini mimi I believe kwangu kila kitu kiko sawa. Uh, and we are good to go mpaka uh, sasa hivi kuna participants almost 20, almost 20. i think is a good number to start karibuni uh, kwenye session yetu ya leo na siku ya leo tutaongelea um, issue ya, ya, ya biashara ambazo tunaziita family owned businesses ambazo ndio majority ya biashara anyway uh, sio tu Tanzania but across the world biashara nyingi ni zinamilikiwa katika katika context ya kifamilia Uh, from the way they started na the way they are run na probably the way kwa zile ambazo zinafanikiwa the way they headed over to the next generation inawezekana kabisa wewe unaendesha mfano uko kwenye biashara unaweza ukafikiria haupo kwenye 
kwenye kwenye kwenye kundi hili but you are kama nitakavyoelezea uko uko mbele uh, i believe kila mtu anaongea Kiswahili huko ndani if there's any non Kiswahili speaker please uh, let me know on the on the chat box lakini i believe kama kila mtu ananielewa ana, ana presentation yangu of course is in english lakini nitajaribu ita, kuongea Kiswahili as much as i can na maswali yetu of course you are free uh, if you think english is your first language uh, please ask in english <laughs> Uh, lakini kama kama mimi English is, is my third language so probably I would, I would ask you to use your second language which is Kiswahili. Uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation I'm going to datumia uh, for my talk. Nitajaribu kuongea uh, probably in 30 to a maximum of 40 minutes. Uh, and then probably we're going to have at least 20 minutes is a Q&A kama mtu anataka share experience. Uh, and then if there is no any question then our hula mtu yote ambaye would like to uh, share experience then probably to tamaliza as early as, as we can um, let me share my slides can we all see the slides Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Santi. Okay, um, Normal fine kitu kimoja hapa ni disable waiting room nafikiri ndo the right way ya kuwala watu wa join automatically. Sio? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go. Hivi tukianza hapa tena pasio kuna watu wako kwenye waiting room. Okay, great. Um so the topic is actually tunaongelea structuring a family business. Uh, kwa sababu family business uh ukiangalia Tanzania of course they make up between maybe 80 to 90% of all businesses. Now globally of course they make up more than uh, they make up more than 50 60 50 60% of all businesses na kuna nchi zingine mchi kama middle east kwa sababu ya ya their cultural background the majority of businesses actually are in family business actually 90% ya biashara ambazo ziko middle east are family owned uh, us i think is almost 60 70% as well uh, so global average is between 50 to 60% because your family businesses are a part and parcel of all the businesses and uh, business on the world. Uh please unmute yourself. Maybe jaribu ku unmute kila mtu but please unmute yourself uh in case you uh, unmute yourself. Uh let me let me mute all. Okay. Uh Koyo talk yangu itakuwa ina maeneo makubwa manne. So one is just to familiarize uh, ourselves with the whole concept here what what is a family business actually tunaposema family business what does it constitute features zipi ambazo kiziona they tell you kwamba this is a family business uh, na kwa nini tuziongelee uh, aina hizo za biashara lakini pia changamoto ambazo majority of family businesses wana face uh, na actually unajua changamoto za biashara normally whether is a family or non family owned business changamoto huwa zinakuepo kwenye biashara na kuna changamoto ambazo zinaepukika na kuna changamoto ambazo they are encouraged na kuna changamoto ambazo zinazoepukika uh, na changamoto normally kwenye any type of businesses na kwa katika three main categories kuna changamoto ambazo unazita pre-start challenges hizi ni changamoto ambazo unakutana nazo kabla hujaanza uh, na ni changamoto ambazo unaweza ukazi avoid lakini kuna changamoto ambazo unazita start challenges ni changamoto ambazo unakutana nazo unapoanza biashara Uh, ambazo mo, in most cases zinakuwa encouraged kwa sababu usipozi ukitaka kuzi avoid hizi uta procrastinate kwa muda mrefu utashindwa kuanza na kuna changamoto ambazo tunaziita ongoing ongoing challenges hizi ni changamoto ambazo unakuwa nazo ni part and parcel of your business if the business is poorly structured changamoto zitakuwa nyingi if you po, if you pick the wrong industry changamoto zitakuwa nyingi uh, but if if your business is well structured and then changamoto zitakuwa charge so the same thing with family businesses family businesses ambazo ziko poorly structured zinakuwa zina a lot of ongoing challenges uh, na ndio maana tutaona kwenye kwenye invite to this to this session nimeongelea kwamba majority of family businesses zina, zina only 13% is in the last to third generation but how do we structure a family business even in a way that 
uh, inaweza ikawa intergenerational uh, leo hii tunaongelea biashara kama Walmart uh, which has a turnover of more than 400 billion dollars uh, they tell you zime, ni, ni family business ambayo imekuwa intergenerational how 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 are these type of businesses structured in a way ambayo ni brand ambayo unaitumia kama Samsung leo hii is a family business lakini is a brand ambayo we use whether it's a phone uh, whether it's your laptop whether it's your TV ni brands ambazo tunazitumia globally but these are all family business well, how are they structured in a way that they manage to be global brands na ziwe competitive na ziweze kuwa intergenerational uh, lakini pia uh, the notion of family trust this is just it's, it's a bonus to the topic ni mbona niongelee kidogo kwa sababu this is a way unaweza ukawa una family structure which is a separate structure out of your business lakini ikakusaidia wewe kwenye ku protect biashara yako uh, uh, in in the longer in the longer in the longer run uh, so for those who have never met me that I've never met uh, uh, maybe just a brief introduction uh, Saluma what is my name na kampuni inatokea ni SC Capital the business which i founded 10 years ago uh, after working 5 to 8 to 5 uh, job uh, na technically we are corporate advisory na, na investment management firm to na operate in, in, in more than one country now na tunafanya kazi i say technically it's so uh, effectively and actively my new sita one is strategy consulting so traditional consulting whether it's doing a business plan whether it's doing a feasibility study for a new project Uh, whether doing a turnaround for a business which is not doing well uh, whether doing research uh, you know whether setting up a new totally new structure if it's a new institution if it's strategic planning you know everything around strategy na under consulting tunafanya kazi na i would say mid sized enterprises any company in turnover can say 1 million dollars and above corporate uh, tunafanya kazi na multinational companies ngos uh, you know government institutions pamoja na other not for profit institutions kama trade associations lakini pia tuna services ambazo tumezeka under the group of investment banking ndani yake hapa kuna vitu kama capital raising we raise money for companies if you want to raise money for your business uh, our 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 uh, sweet, sweet point ni, ni business ambazo zinajaribu ku raise money kuanzia 1 million dollars uh, lakini sasa hivi tunajaribu pia kuangalia how we can support smaller businesses to raise money from as low as 10,000 dollars uh, kama kwa maana startups uh, lakini pia tunafanya masuala ya mergers and acquisitions if you want to buy off another company or if you are selling your company to another company so we can structure the deal uh, na ku support the whole process kuanzia mwanzo paka mwisho uh, lakini pia tunafanya asset management is a new service ambayo tumeanza last year uh, uh, and asset management tunasaidia individuals and institutions to manage their wealth Uh, so we, we we advise you where to invest your money na ku monitor your investment portfolio financial services ni maeneo ambayo tuna we are, we are also trying to build our own uh, pipeline ya ku finance uh, early stage businesses uh, so under that tuna wow I'm hearing some funny noise okay so financial services tunajaribu ku to use our own balance sheet to aid small businesses so either through uh, micro lending uh, of course we, we are launching a crowdfunding platform soon na pia tuna tuna raise our own fund for our first uh, venture capital fund kwa ajili ya small uh, small businesses lakini pia tuko kwenye private equity and venture capital space uh, venture capital space tunasaidia makampuni usoke leo nasikia mimi toa kila mtu Okay. Takuwa panda wako. Okay. Mr. Okay. Niko nasikia kama vile mtu ana koroma. Ningesema baba mtu amelala labda. Um anyway. <laughs> Private equity and venture capital ni maeneo ambayo uh, we, we have been uh, actively working for the past 3 4 years tunasaidia watu kupata mitaji from venture capital sources globally. Uh, lakini tunasaidia venture capital funds ambazo ziko nje ya nchi ambazo they want to invest uh, in Tanzania under that tuna, tuna manage two networks tuna manage Tanzania venture capital network uh, na tuna manage Tanzania angel investors network as well as a pipeline ambapo hizi investment is inapitia we have dpo services as well uh, lakini mwisho tunafanya tunafanya training and the training we have a division tunaita SSC academy which is part and parcel of uh, today's talk Uh, so SSC Academy is a division SSC Capital abayo 
we have set up specifically kwa ajili ya kufanya training short term and long term training we see huge skills gap in this market uh, ambayo tunafikiri we can play a, a role ya kusaidia uh, biashara ziweze kupata the right people uh, lakini pia kusaidia business owners kuwa na skills uh, za ku run biashara zao but end of the day as well kusaidia uh, watu wengine ambao uh, they want to change their careers into areas ambazo zimestaja whether it's finance investment technology entrepreneurship pamoja na pamoja na corporate governance bila sia kirere sana ah sorry ina unaweza kusikia kutoka kwangu labda hapana sio nasikia kama vile kuna kirere flani hivi um Uh, okay. Uh, you, you can just mute it all. Okay. Okay. Good to go. Okay. So. Um so kwenye family what if, what is a family business anyway? Uh, you can we, we are not here to start defining uh stuff. We don't define things. Uh we're not in the world of definitions. Uh, we are past that. Lakini najaribu tu ku set a tone of uh the, the scope of my talk na pongeza family business na kuwa na naongelea kitu gani so we can always make a reference to what i define as a family business so family business is any business ambayo uh, whether two or more family members are heavily involved uh, either in the ownership or in the management or in the decision making ya hiyo biashara usika na involvement yao is based whether on blood ties wala ni ndugu wa damu uh, au is based on marriage kwa hiyo watu wanaweza kuanza biashara as as uh, spouses watu wanaweza kuanza biashara as brothers watu wanaweza kuanza biashara mtu mmoja anaweza kuanza biashara biashara then baadaye aka, aka bring on board family members uh, as long as hiyo biashara is not driven by one person uh, then it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a family it's a family business unaweza kuwa wewe umeanzisha biashara na ume umeajili ndugu zako lakini they have no control in ownership they have no control in decision making they have no say in the management then that's not a family business hata kama umeajili ndugu zako so ukiona mtu ameajili ana biashara ya mabasi ana own mabasi 20 na kila driver kwenye mabasi ni ndugu yake but they have no control in the business that's not a family uh, family owned business lazima kuwe kuna uh, some features ambazo zitaifanya ile kuwa family owned family owned business kwa hiyo roles wanazo play wao Uh, kwenye 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 biashara zina wanaweza watu wakaajiriwa regardless of their qualifications lakini family businesses pia ina tabia ya kuwa mass generational kwa kama we we have a business ambayo we set up or you are part of the business which has been set up lakini haina vision ya kutaka kuirithisha hii biashara to the next generation uh, then we don't regard that as a family business family business lazima iwe ina feature ya kuwa mass generational na ndio maana tunaongelea succession planning kwa sababu we would talk of succession planning kama hii biashara doesn't care about who comes next after the founder dies or retires uh, lakini pia kuna issues za management uh, lazima huko na maingiliano ya, ya decisions ambazo zinafanyika katika management na decision making uh, kwa maana ya who is involved uh, do you involve other family members kabla hujaamua kitu or is it just one person deciding everything uh, for the for the business kwa hivi ni vitu ambavyo vinaifanya biashara yako iwe whether it's family owned or non family owned or family based or non family based if 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 you and your siblings have a business lakini haina hizi features know that is not a family business if you want it to be a family business lazima iwe ina iwe na tabia hizi na family business of course kama nilivyosema globally is a huge is a massive industry uh, you can't ignore it uh, almost Uh, every five every 10 businesses ambazo unaziona barabarani uh, kwa Tanzania maybe 6 or 7 hizo biashara ni their family owned uh, globally every 10 businesses you see anywhere in the world 5 to 6 of such businesses are family owned if you go to dubai today if you go to uh, countries such as uh, saudi arabia if you go to such a country such as bahrain every 10 businesses you see 9 out of all such businesses are family owned if you go to india almost the same number 80 to 90% of all businesses in india uh, are family owned na unfortunately family owned businesses ambazo ziko africa 
as much as the predominant command uh, number of businesses you see, but they're very small in terms of revenue if you, are com if you are compare to other family businesses katika nchi zingine. Kwa kiangalia uh, Eastern Nyang kila mwaka huo wana, wana index wanafanya uh, ya family, uh, wanaita family business index ambayo ina select the 500 largest businesses, family businesses in the world by turnover na by assets. Kwenye hiyo index uh, majority of businesses actually zinatoka North America, predominantly US and Canada, pamoja na Europe. Ambazo zina account for almost uh, 75%. Kwa hiyo three quarters of all businesses or family business ambazo ni kubwa duniani is they are based in Europe and North America. So Africa accounts for only 1%. Why, 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 why did I have to share this chart? It tells you kwamba pamoja pamoja na kuwa family businesses are a, a majority but they are very small. Uh kuna kuta ni wanaita moms and mom, mom and pop stores uh, majority of, of of these businesses. But there's a reason why majority of family businesses in Africa are very small. And uh, tongelea uko mbele. Na ukizichukua easy 500 family businesses ambayo are the largest in the world. Total turnover ya easy biashara zote kwa mwaka they generate 6.1 trillion dollars so it tells you kwamba if if these 500 family businesses were a country leo hii duniani they, they will be the third largest economy in the world just behind us and china uh koyo inakupa inakupa the picture one the magnitude of of family businesses like in out of this 6.1 trillion worth of revenue africa account for only 1% of that uh, na na sasa hivi pia the landscape is changing kwa zamani family businesses zilikuwa ziko very tunaita uh, close ended businesses ni biashara ambazo ni za nyumbani za nyumbani there's no outside investor there's no outside shareholder lakini the, the world is changing na biashara nyingi ambazo ni family owned services na they go public and they sell their shares you can go say even on, on say new york stock exchange na kununua shares za uh, uh, za walmart unaweza kununua shares za uh, uh, Samsung kama nilisema pale mwanzo na these are family owned businesses lakini zimeamua kwenda public na kuza share zao for obvious reasons maybe they want to improve their corporate governance maybe they want to raise new money ambazo uh, probably familia isingeweza tena ku inject for these businesses to become global brands na kama nilisema pale mwanzo ukiangalia biashara kama Walmart which is started 1962 uh, sasa hivi ina turnover ya zaidi ya, ya 400 billion dollars Volkswagen which we all know uh, Grenco, which is in commodities, mining, and, and, and other, and, and other uh, similar sectors. Samsung, Kama Nivusema, Biashara 1969, Pakaleo, they keep on, keep on going. Philips, which you all know. Uh, all these are some of the family businesses. These are the top five, five, five family businesses in the world by turnover. Of course, this is some old data. But if you look at uh, the latest data, they are still almost uh, um, around the same, the same list. So kwanini kwanini tunaongelea family business why do they matter anyway so one of the reasons why uh, family business make a lot of sense and, and make an interesting subject to talk about is the the role the opposition and the contributions that they they can make either to a family itself uh, to the community that they serve in or to the global economy or to the country's economy uh ukiangalia watu ambao kwenye 400 fortune list the most richest people, the 400 most richest people in the world, 44% of these people come from family businesses. So you can see, combined family businesses are well structured, are well run, they can they can you know produce billionaires. Like in more than 50%, yeah, easy biashara. Uh, family owned. Uh, so they have huge contribution come to creating jobs. Uh, that's why they create between 50 to 80 percent of all jobs globally. Like here, they contribute between 70 to 90 percent of the global GDP. Uh, but on top of that, if the family business is well structured, if it is well run, it is a kind of source yeah, into a generational wealth. Your family is near you. Sika, it is a kind of you are a family. If it's a father or it's a grandfather, he uh, will transition the business over time. Either will fear that he will end up with a couple of visas and visas and visas and probably. Uh, kama 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 mtafall under the 13% of generational business ambazo zinaendelea ku survive 
you find Komba, probably you, you may no, never leave a single day to see poverty. Uh, so we found the JP Morgan Chase, which is the largest bank in the world today, uh, investment bank in the world today, like in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in JP Morgan Monieri. Uh, ukiangalia biashara kama uh, Goldman Sachs, Kohali Ambaro Fatima Investment Banking is one of the largest investment banks today in the world, like in the institution of Goldman Munyere. Koyo, mpaka brand is mendelea leo hiu, you can never tell the difference between the brand and the founder, kwa sababu tayali, ili business imesha kwa instituted in a way that it's just part and part of our daily lives. Uh, lakini pia, easy fa- fa- biashara za familia, if they are well strengthened, uh, is nereza pia zika strengthen the family ties. Kama you have an extended family, or if you have a bigger family uh, of many siblings, kama hakuna, hakuna maelewano mazuli, if these people sit on the table and make decisions, if these people can go out for a family retreat for the business, if these, if these family members can get maybe 10, 20% of their annual revenue uh, derived from the uh, dividends which are paid out from the family, from the family business, uh, then inaweza katumika kuwaweka pamoja. Of course, uh, inaweza pia katumika more family members can be the source of conflict, like any peer, family business can be the source of putting together all the family members. Kwa Tanzania, uh, the structure of family businesses, unfortunately, mwaka huu, early this year, kuna survey ilifanyika ya family-owned businesses Tanzania, but only 22 uh, family businesses wali participate. Kama nivu sema pali mwanzo, majority ya family businesses wala penda kuwa very, very close door. Uh, kwa hiyo hata kwenye survey ilifanyika ilifanywa na Asoko uh, Insights uh, which is a UK based data, comp- data company uh, ili ilipitia makampuni 22 out of these 22 family owned businesses majority of course were found to be in agriculture which is about 27% 18% were in construction uh, na 9% uh, were in consumer goods the likes of uh, you know foods and, and beverages uh, and, 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 and other stuff again were in transport and logistics and very small percentages as you go when you other 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 types of businesses actually manufacturing and industry were 13.6 percent and majority of these businesses actually indian owned that's why you see majority of them are family owned now almost 45 percent your family owned business in Brazil they 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 have a turnover of between 10 to 25 million dollars now only 4%, actually say 5% ya biashara za ambazo ni family owned zizo po Tanzania zina turnover ya at least 500 million dollars. Kwa hapa you don't get the likes of Bakresa, you know, SS, uh, side side Bakresa group of companies, Azam, you don't get the likes of MATL, uh, you know, you don't get the likes of um, uh, kina Jitesh Patel na watu wengine kama hao. Kwa those family owned businesses chache those they, they give you that that level of turnover. Kina majority ya family owned businesses wako kwenye turnover range of 10 to 25 25 million. Uh, na majority of these businesses again zina zina create jobs. Uh, kwa hiyo utaona almost 25% of these businesses zina 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 create jobs of between 200 to 500 people. Um, so what are the challenges Ambazo Zippo to majority of, so I'm giving this as a, as a background towards our structuring of, of a family business. Changamoto Zippo Ambazo is an affect majority of family business. Kichakwanza of course in the succession planning. Uh, in a particular succession planning, when, when the founder of the company, say the father, and up appoint one of the children to be the future CEO of the company, when he dies, in a tokia dispute among family members, wangino wana kata, you and by mekono minute kuwa CEO to take up the throne. Na yi na isa dispute into a business na tumona kuna besha zingine, mbaka zimepekana makamani na zingine zimetuana fakwa nye magazeti, ya dispute ya who should be the next CEO. Na tumona, uh, inchi kama Europe na wapi, unona paka watu wana wana, kwa sababu to the, they are not ready to let uh, another sibling to be the next CEO. Uh, lakini changamoto nyingine liopo ni kwamba family businesses in Apokua, they, they, they come to a level where they need to hire professionals ambao they don't have internally. Kwa wanezo waka hire mtu ambayo ni very professional, waka ajiriwa, if he's an accountant or CFO, uh, whether he's a 
production manager, maybe the factory, uh, maybe the marketing manager. Lakini inashitokia ni kwamba uyu professional anapoleta mawazo yake na anapojaribu kubadilisha the direction of the company uh, kama kuna family members ambao hawakubaliana naye they start disputing uh, kwa hiyo kuna, kuna dispute inatokea uh, among the family members and the professional employees na inaweza ika affect the performance of the company lakini changamoto nyingine ambayo tunaiona kwenye family business ni kuweka watu katika positions without having the proper qualifications uh, so it's not a, it's not a problem ya kumwajili family member kwenye very professional position uh, it only becomes a problem uh, when a family member anapopewa position ambayo is very critical for the company na hana qualifications za hiyo biashara kwa mfano angalia tunaongelea majority of family businesses na turnover between 10 to 25 million uh, dollars kwa tunaongelea biashara ambazo zingine zina, zina turnover more than 50 billion a year lakini you have an accountant who never seen an accounting class uh, ambaye haelewi kabisa even the basic balance sheet na anakuwa ana entrusted a company which has a turnover of more than 50 billion a year so it tells you uh, uh, under such circumstances what a, what type of a mess can be created in that particular in that particular company kampuni unakuta is massive in a, in a thing in a, in a produce a tons and tons of products a year in a factory like in a production manager ni mtu ambaye uh, doesn't know anything about that particular uh, that particular production whether he's not an engineer he's not a full scientist uh, you know is is no way close to be a production manager mwisho uh, siku you see issues with quality na inaweza ka affect the growth and the survival of the business lakini uh, changamoto nyingine ambayo family business nyingi na face ni kwenye profit sharing kwa sababu normally when when the family business is is, is set up not all family business you want to be part and parcel of running that the company hata wewe leo hii you may come up with an idea ukakana ndugu zako unasema na guys let's start something watu wakachanga hela uh, naona sasa hivi kuna family whatsapp groups watu wana wana, wana, wana collect wana, wana kusanya pesa and then maybe they have 50 million 100 million they decide to start a business lakini hawa watu wengine wana they have their own careers wengine wameajiriwa wengine maybe they have their own uh, separate businesses wengine wako nje nchi and then maybe they nominate one or two people kufanya kusimamia ile biashara and then what happens is wale wachache ambao sasa wana run that family business kwa sababu ni employees wanakuwa entitled to earning a salary um, end of the month and probably uh, they may also be rewarded uh, part of the profit kama kuna that compensation model within the company lakini unapofika mwisho wa mwaka wale other family members wana expect kwamba kwa sababu wao liweka la yao na it's a family business wana expect kwamba there will be some sort of profit share to them lakini hawa wachache ambao wanaendesha wana ile biashara assume kwamba they are running this business efficiently and they are running well this business wanaweza kusema okay we are not paying out dividends we are not giving out any profit shares for now kwa sababu the company is still very immature we will be reinvesting all the, the company's proceeds kwa ajili ya ku grow this company kwa sababu 70 to 70 to 75% of businesses in the first five years they grow especially in Africa from reinvesting of retained earnings kwa hiyo zile ambazo zinapatikana ukizizurisha kwenye biashara uh, that's when uh, you can see growth sasa family members may, 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 may dispute some of the family members may dispute wakaona maybe only the few benefit kwa sababu wanapata mshahara or maybe they have some other benefits they get from the from the business labda mwenzenu ambaye mmemwajiri pale mkampa position as CEO labda from the business ameweza kujenga nyumba maybe he has bought a new car maybe he send his kids to the to the to the to, the, to, the, uh, to a better school mnaweza kuisi kama vile ana waibia ana nini and then that starts to create crack in that family business issue nyingine ni interest family members can have different interest in a company uh, assume kwamba some of these family members are involved how they are involved in decision making you go to a family board nataka mu uh, approve kitu fulani wengine wanakataa wengine wanataka wengine wanataka a different direction uh, wengine hawataki hiyo direction normally unakuwa una, una, una family members is, uh, tend to split in the board in the boardrooms na inasababisha inasababisha changamoto kubwa kwenye ku run that particular business na wengine wanasema okay if if push comes to shove let's just sell the business and split whatever that we can we can we can have lakini kitu kingine 
ambacho ni changamoto kubwa naiona kwenye family business Tanzania and this I have a very personal experience with this ni kwamba they miss out a lot of opportunities kwa sababu they just want to keep 100% of the company leo hii uh, one of the challenges we face kwenye ku uh, promote venture capital investment in, into Tanzania ni kwa sababu majority of family owned businesses hawako tayari ku accept uh, this type of money kwa sababu venture capital money comes with the condition kwamba you must also sell out part of uh, part of your shares to them could be 10% could be 15%. Kwa watu wengine wana kama vile no they want to bring in an outsider uh, kwa hiyo they keep the money at the door wana wanaamua kubaki na ownership of the company by 100% hata kama hawana uwezo wa kuweka additional capital for the expansion of the business. So the business remains small. Uh, Our growth yake inakuwa uh, vele linear wakati waongeza ku achieve exponential growth if they had accepted outside money or if they had accepted kwenda kwenye Dar es Salaam stock exchange na ku list na ku raise new capital uh, as, lo- as long as they agree to sell maybe 25% of the company. Kwa hiyo they miss out on massive opportunities just because they just want to keep the company 100%. Na World Economic Forum last year walifanya survey ya kuangalia the relationship between uh, family businesses ambazo ziko listed na zile ambazo ziko listed. Kwa hiyo unlisted manake ni biashara ambazo ni, pri- ni private owned uh, uh, businesses uh, na hazijauza hazi hisa zake kwenye 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 soko la hisa. Na listed manake hizi ni biashara ambazo zimeamua kwenda kwenye, kwenye, kwenye stock market na kuuza shares zake the likes of we see with the stock stock exchange where you go and see Vodacom you see TBL you see TCC you see Tiger Cement all these businesses are listed kwa utaona kwamba uh, family business nyingi uh, when when they when they unlisted there is no balance between uh, family welfare in the financial performance uh, at 78% but when they are listed uh, you see kwamba the business the financial performance takes over uh, takes over the family family welfare kwa hiyo unakuta kwamba majority of businesses when they are unlisted as family business uh, only 12% wana uwezo ku maximize their financial performance unlike zile ambazo ni family lakini listed they can maximize financial performance almost by 40 by 40% Uh, hence the saying na nani tumekushata na huu msemo kwamba you either hold 100% of a million dollar business or hold 10% of a billion dollar business so you can sell part of your business for the business to grow ili wewe una percent ya bigger cake au keep 100% of your business uh, and, but keep a small cake uh ni kiongelea kuhusu survival rate ya family family businesses nyingi uh, utaona kwamba you start a business today lakini the way businesses inavo, inavo transcend over generations uh, business nyingi zina, zina collapse so you go to second generation only 30% is na survive 70% is na collapse you go to third generation only 12% of businesses ambazo zilianza zindo zina survive 80% they're dead in fourth generation only 3% of businesses you see surviving and 97% of these businesses is collapse So if you see any family business ambayo ime ime survive fourth generations leo hii basi jua kwamba it is only part of the 3% uh, of family of family businesses globally but why 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 is it kwamba biashara nyingi zina fail over time kwa nini uh, zinashindwa ku succeed over generations so one of the reasons kama nilivyosema mwanzo is failure to agree on the successor kama hamkubaliani who is going to be the next ceo uh, the business will struggle itajiingiza kwenye conflicts it affect performance of the company and mwisho siku you won't see this business going to the next generation lakini wakati mwingine tumeona uh, mtu anaweza kawa akawa akawa appointed as the next ceo na ka take up the throne and then over time akataka uh, kwenda ku pursue other interest na kaiacha ile biashara unattended uh, whether he ndio alikuwa the right person maybe amesomeshwa aje aje take over the ceo na akaona maybe the too many conflicts in the business au akaona maybe he or she can go for greener pastures beyond the family business na akaondoka na akaiacha biashara in the hands of people who were not prepared to be the CEOs. Uh, wakati mwingine pia successor anaweza akabaki kwenye biashara lakini aka take a wrong turn for the business. Na hii tumeiona uh, biashara nyingine. You can take a good turn uh, say tulio mfano labda MTL when more came back to take over the the uh, the running of MTL 
MTL was already a $20 million business, but was mainly a commodity trader. Uh, so when he came, he came, he, uh, he came on board, uh, as far as I know, uh, he came with the idea of adding value, setting up all this manufacturing and diversifying the group. Uh, so you see, he took the right turn for the businesses. Uh, if you see today, Bakresa uh, sent his kids to abroad to, to start, some of them uh, turn out to be great, uh, great, uh, uh, great custodians of the company. They sit in the board and they run some of the subsidiaries very well, Nakuba Delisha, the entire outlook of the company. And probably Utawana Leo Baresa going into sectors ambazo traditionally, they wouldn't even dare go invest. Changamoto uh, Nyingine, of course, in the picking the wrong successor, uh, and by probably one of the qualities is a CEO. Or is a pick two successor because Babu is the oldest, or is the eldest, or is the most talkative person in the group. Mkamoa mumpe o CEO, kumbi hawez kuran that business. Watu mgu ne pia family businesses is national kuendelea because Babu is national kuji kuji reinvest. Koyo na anza biashara, biashara familia ya mabasi ya kutoka da kuenda sumbawanga biashara ina run for three, four, five years. Mzee mwenye ndo anajua jinsi ya kudiri na ale mabasi, basi limekuwa masiju wapi, anajua kumtuma fundi na nina nini. Biashara, by the time ana, anaondoka, the new uh, successor comes in, na ye anaendelea na the same way mzee wako na rani ale mabasi. Uh, and then anashindwa uh, kubadilisha biashara iendane na, 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 na the requirements za leo hii. Uh, Kwa hivyo anajikuta kumpa na run the old buses with the old business models, now, the new buses and buses in the industry with the, with the way and buses they are run, when they, they push him out of the market. Lakini pia, changamoto nyingine ni kwamba panakuwa hakuna mechanism ya kumgroom successor. Kwa hiyo, mtu aneza kamua kwamba, okay, this is my family business and I point so and so to be the next CEO. Lakini hakuna mazingira, wala hakuna a proper HR planning ya kumgroom uyu mtu kuwa the next successor. Koe ana, anajulikana kwenye books kwamba he will be the next CEO but akuna any grooming and as to the owner when he dies or she dies yeye yeah, yeah, take over the office of the company lakini anakuwa hayuko prepared kwa maana ya kuteka over kwa hiyo anakutana na vitu ambavyo he or she has completely no idea on where to start and where to take the company forward lakini ndaka nikusifia pia kidogo family business ambazo they are based on marriages najua ni topic ambayo uh, most people tend to shy away from talking lakini tumeona family businesses nyingi ambazo uh, kama nilivyosema pale mwanzo inaweza ikawa ni family business based on blood tie au inaweza kawa ni family business based on marriage. Kwa hiyo two, part, two parties come together uh, watu wanaoana and then they decide to start a business. Changamoto nyingi zinatokea kwenye ile biashara. Uh, kuna kwa kuna hakuna maelewano wakati mwingine labda yale ya nyumbani yana affect the performance of the business. Au maelewano yekenda to the extreme na watu waka separate uh, and then probably in a affect to a to a large extent zile biashara uh, au wakati mwingine uh, mmoja of the family members ana inject capital and the other family member anaamua kusimamia ile biashara lakini hakuna any uh, structure ambayo inasema wewe unakuwa engaged uh, katika mi, katika misingi ipi kwao nakuta uh, mwanamme anaweka pesa and then probably mwanamke anafanya ile biashara siku waki separate uh, a man pushes away a woman pasipo any compensation in the business na anamwambia mimi ni wewe watu hapo unafanya but everything i invested myself anasahau kwamba kwenye biashara kuna kitu kinaitwa sweat equity huyo mtu aliput all the time all the energy all the stress in the business kwa hiyo is ni she is part and parcel of the business na tumeona uh, in many cases zinakuja zinakuja cases za hivi uh, za kuangalia za magani ambao unaweza unaweza kuzi, kuzi, kuzisaidia so one of the things that are very important for family business based on marriage to, to look at is uh, naenda kwenye partly solution for for this ni ku incorporate so incorporate the business if the two of you want uh, want to start a business please incorporate start a company uh, give shares to each other na kubalianeni kama wewe una you inject the capital mzako ana inject labor kuna kuna contractual arrangements za kukubaliana atapata what percentage of share or what percentage of profit mwisho siku lakini pia define roles kila mmoja ajulikane roles zake ni zipi ili pasiyo kuna maingiliano family businesses ambazo they are based on marriages nyingine zina fail kwa sababu kuna kuna a lot of interferences wewe umeshampa mwanzo wako afanye ile biashara asimamie 
but you, your nose is always in the business. You always interfere. You know, you want to go to the house and go to the house. You want to go to the house and go to the house. You want to go to the house and go to the house. You want to go to the house. It's very important to define roles when you have to do this. So you can incorporate a company, but on top of the company, and the majority of shareholders when you have to do this, ile ile mema tipeke yake ajitosherezi ku handle uh, management of the company inabidi outside the mema mtakiwa pia msign kitu tunaita shareholders agreement ambayo ndio ina define roles na expectations za kila shareholder lakini pia inawasaidia in the, in, in, the, in an event of liquidation uh, if you decide to you turn up uh, Okay. Naona kuna mtu ameingia. Jamani tulisema tu tulisema tu mute. Let me see. Oh, mtu Unaweza mtu. uka mute tena o. Oh. Okay. Okay. Hiyo ni mna nini? Ah, amutiki. Okay. Um Let me just do a few slides kabla sija kwa sababu mwendo wenyewe umeenda sana. Uh, ili niweze kuachia kama kuna maswali. Kwa hiyo niko naongelea kwenye issue ya ya uh, family business based on marriages. Kwa hiyo it's very important unajua unapokuwa una, una structure when a family business is structured as a corporate inawasaidia even in the event of liquidation. Kama mkiamua kuifunga ile biashara what happens to the assets and liabilities of the business. Kwa hiyo kama mme sign uh, shareholders agreement na kama mli incorporate ile kampuni then sheria ya makampuni companies act itachukua mkondo wake na ina, na, 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 na sheria za, za mikataba pia zitachukua mkondo wake on how assets will be liquidated na it's very important hata kama mki separate uh, kwa sababu mnapo separate kama zile mali ziko under ownership of one of the other maana kitabidi muingie kwenye mambo ya mirafi lakini kama zile assets zilikuwa separated already in terms of ownership you don't take that to mirat kwa sababu ni ownership tayari ilichakuwa defined kama this is mine this is yours hii haiwezi kuingia haiwezi kuingia kwenye masuala ya mirathi kwa hiyo na mirathi mara nyingi turns out to be very ugly unfortunately to some family members kwa hiyo lazima tuelewe hiyo lazima tuelewe kwamba kwenye family business kuna kitu kinaitwa sweat equity hata kama wewe umemchukua mdogo wako mtoto wa shangazi yako mtoto wa mjomba wako umemtoa kijijini umemtoa mkoani umemtoa dar es kwa sababu uko busy umeajiriwa Uh, unataka yeye kusaidia asimamie biashara umefungua sijui baba shop sijui umefungua restaurant sijui umefungua nini unamweka pale na humlipi chochote just because yeye anakula nyumbani analala nyumbani bure that is not agreeable mwisho wa siku watu kama hao ndio they tend to steal from your business so uh, elewa kwamba kwenye biashara kuna kitu kinaitwa sweat equity where unaweza kumpa shares mtu in exchange of the sweat that they give into the company uh, so what can we do kitu cha kwanza we need to plan a family business need to be planned just like any other business na planning a success, ya, ya family business iko katika maeneo manne so the first thing is to do what we call family planning family planning manake sio ile uzazi wa mpango family planning manake you sit down as a family and they agree kwamba we want to start a business na mnakubaliana common vision where we want to take this company to uh, what sort of things we want to do as a company mkishakubaliana ni rahisi sana kwenda kwenye section ya pili ya business planning then you start to plan for your business kwa sababu the vision of the business ni tofauti na vision of the family family ni kawa ina vision yake tofauti kabisa na where you want to take the business to sasa ukiplan vizuri your, your, your family goals in with respect to the business ni rahisi sana ku interact goals za familia na ukazi harmonize na goals za biashara na pasiyo kuna conflict baadaye between business goals and, and, and family goals wakati mwingine family member anaumwa anataka atoe hela kwenye biashara akatibiwe umeelewa if that was part of the family vision kwamba biashara pia isaidie kwenye ku attend some, some of the expenses za family members then there's no problem kwenye biashara kutokuwa kuna portion ya, 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 ya kampuni 
ambayo itakuwa imekuwa imekuwa set aside kwa ajili ya ku attend uh, emergencies of family members when they merge kwa hiyo that's where you see you can align between the vision of the business and the vision of the company if you sit down and plan together lakini lazima ufanye succession planning in succession planning ina involve vitu vitatu technically cha kwanza ni ku nominate mtu who do you want to be the next ceo na hiyo haifanyi na mtu mmoja so you need to sit down and agree hata kama wewe ndo you are the sponsor you are the don sit down with the family members na waambie kwamba i'm nominating x to be the next ceo when i retire or when i die na kama kama ni family members at the same level they can vote as well na kukubaliana kwa sababu hii itampa mandate yule aliyochaguliwa kwamba walimkubali wali na wamemelect kwa the next ceo kwa itapunguza zile conflict ambazo unazoziona za watu kutokubaliana na ceo ambaye amekuwa nominated as successor lakini anakuwa anatakiwa kuwa kuwa groomed ukiona kwenye corporate world leo hii kuna vitu wanaita management trainee au kuna internships na nini za mtu za anaweza kuwa anaandaliwa kuchukua certain certain position in the future so the same thing kama unataka kumwandaa mtu kuwa the next ceo of the company anatakiwa awe awe aweke kwenye different positions over time awe groomed umuingize kidogo kwenye accounts umuingize kidogo kwenye operations umuingize kidogo kiwandani umuingize kidogo kwenye sales aelewe zile the dynamics of a company ili kesho atapokuwa ceo ni rahisi sana yeye kuweza ku ku manage ile biashara na ku grow kwa sababu he understand the business in and out lakini usisubiri tu kama umempeleka mtu kusoma Marekani anarudi alafu next month na next month na point kama CEO is never run a business before she has never run a business before unafikiri kwamba the right education ambayo umpa can can make a change mwisho siku inaleta a lot of a lot of problems to the company and lastly ni kufanya estate planning kwa sababu kuna a very thin line between uh, biashara nyingi unaona zinakufa they tend to die with the founder so the founder dies he dies or she dies with the company. So what, what can you do na na kisha kufa mara nyingi zile mali zake watu wanaweza kaamua kuzigawana zikaingia kwenye mirathi and that will be the end of story. So what can you do how can you protect some asset of the company na asset za 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 maybe for 50 years ziendelee kuwepo for the future generations maybe for your kids and your grandkids ni kutengeneza kitu naita family family trust ambayo nitaiongelea uh, shortly. So how do you structure a family business? vitu vikubwa vinne if you are starting a family business leo if you have a family business already angalia kama hivi vitu unavyo tayari these are the things that need to be part and parcel of a family business cha kwanza you must incorporate watu wanaisha biashara kwa sababu ni ndugu haina proper structure imeanisha tu maybe in a business name haiko kwenye it's not a, 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 a corporation you need to move away from that you can never start a multinational business as a business name as a sole proprietor lazima ibadilishwe end into a, co- a corporate structure that's the first thing you need to do second lazima u set a board of directors i understand kwamba family members may make decisions on a dinner table as they say uh, but this is not the way it works you don't make decisions za biashara kwenye family whatsapp group you need to set a board na nyinyi family members can can be the uh, uh, members of the board so you become the uh, directors of the board and that's where you decide Uh, succession planning that's where you decide how you use the profits of the company that's where you decide uh, you know the direction of the company where to invest next that's where you decide vitu gani ambavyo mnafikiria ni muhimu for the company kwa sababu family members wengi wanakuwa hawataki don family members waingie kwenye board then mnaweza mka set up kitu naita advisory board ambayo ni separate uh, ni separate organ within the company structure ambao hawa kazi yao wao how i make decisions for the company how kazi yao ni kuwashauri board of directors so the board of directors inapotaka kufanya maamuzi na haina probably the right professions za kuweza kufanya yale maamuzi inayapeleka yale ma, ya, ya, ile ombi inaenda kwenye kwenye advisory board so you can have a, an advisory board maybe of three members the people that you appoint mmeza tumkawalipa maybe uh, some small compensation maybe you get a lawyer someone with the background in finance some mungina maybe some operations guy what about they know they understand the interests of a business wakaishauri wakaishauri board kwa sababu ungeweza kuwaweka hawa wakawa part of the board of directors lakini family nyingi uh, they tend to they tend to be very very uh, close ended hata vikao vingine vya board probably vinafanyika nyumbani kwa hiyo uh, you can have a separate board ambayo yenyewe kazi yake is an advisory role only pasipo kuingilia maamuzi ya board and then uh, the last thing you need to do is you need to separate roles kwa hiyo kwenye structure ya ya, ya kampuni 
ya ambayo is family owned ikawa ina maeneo matatu ikawa ina family right ikawa ina ownership rights na employee rights kwa sababu kuna kitu tunaita family myth family myth manaki as long as you think you are part of the of the family then you think you are entitled to everything in the family business you think you are entitled to any position in the family management apana these are three different rights kuna family right ambayo itakuwa defined vizuri as a family member what are you entitled to kuna ownership rights who is entitled uh, to the ownership of the company na mwisho employee rights kwamba who is entitled to be part and parcel of the management of the company ili ku avoid ya ku misplace watu na kuweka katika maeneo ambayo uh, ambayo ambayo hawapasi hawapasi kuwepo so how do you do the succession planning uh, i'll share the slides you can look at this najaribu kwenda haraka kwa sababu ya muda uh, so one thing is engage and align with the family sit down and agree kwamba mnataka kumselect nani au the next CEO uh, you know in the next is nikuwa na strategy ya uh, ambayo is, is is driven by criteria uh, ya, kum, ya kumpata yeye lakini mwisho uh, thirdly you need to identify someone internally na na, ku, na kuangalia kama anaweza kafaa kuwa the next CEO uh, and then mmeweza mkamonitor na kuangalia progress yake mkamwekea maybe some KPIs over time uh, and then anza mmeweza pia mkaangalia kama hamwezi mkapata mtu internally mmeweza mkachagua mtu wa nje na mkakubaliana uh, who can be the next CEO and then CEO anakuwa an, selected on boarded na anakuwa groomed over time uh, so what is a family trust nitaka niongelee kidogo these are last my last two slides family trust in is a structure ambayo ina protect the 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 owner uh, of the assets from uh, from different events it could be taxes uh, could be liquidation uh, you know uh, could be court cases na mambo mengine kwa hiyo you set up a family trust uh, ambayo unachukua portion of the assets za kwako wewe au portion of the asset of the company alafu unazi place under the trust ukisha zipeleka zile assets under the trust wewe tena hauna entitlement kwenye zile assets zile assets zinakuwa under the trustee ambaye mmemo appoint kuzimanage zile, zile zile assets na trustee anatakiwa kuziendeleza zile assets so they will invest inza kawa ni pesa kwa aka invest zile hela over time inza kawa ni property akaiendeleza na aka build more and more properties uh, inza kawa ni land aka develop kwa yeye as a trustee ana ana anakuwa obligated kwanza ku protect ile asset isipotee lakini pili ni ku grow ile asset over time na ukisha i grow ile asset over time inaweza kawa ina a number of benefits to family members over time including the family business itself so these are some of the benefits za ku set up a family tr- trust pembeni na family trust actually unaweza kai set up in different tunaita tax efficient jurisdiction kwa lugha nyepesi ni kuipeleka katika nchi nyingine uh, the so called tax haven so you can set up in British Virgin Island you can set up in in Mauritius it's not expensive it's not rocket science it's easy you can just set it up uh, in in another environment kwa ajili pia ku protect uh, the, the future uh, the future generation kwa moja you set up a family trust kwa sababu ina protect zile asset which has been misused kwa sababu the moment umezi uh umezi bequeath zile assets to a trustee manake wewe you are not entitled kwenye kuzichukua tena zile assets lakini pili income ambayo itapatikana from the investment of the assets za trust inaweza katumika kulipia gharama zingine za family members ili wasi withdraw pesa from the business kwa hiyo kama kuna watu wanakiwa wasomeshwe kama kuna matizo ya, ya, ya matibabu you know kama kuna mtu amemaliza amemaliza shule hataki kufanya kazi kwenye family business nataka apewe mtaji badala ya ku draw down the money from the from the uh, from the business balance sheet mtachukua part of the income from the trust ikalipia his expenses na kuiacha biashara ikaendelea kuwa sustainable over time lakini pia biashara zina go through different uh, season wakati mwingine biashara inaweza kawa kwenye tough time uh, and maybe imechukua mikopo imeshindwa kulipa mikopo and the business can be at a risk of being sold uh, by the bank uh what can you do unaweza ukatumia income ambayo may generate from the trust uh, investments na ikaje ka rescue ika, ika, ika rescue ile biashara uh, from going under lakini pia uh, inaweza ika create wealth ambayo over time investment income ambayo inapatikana pale ikatumika kwenye kujenga vizazi na, viz, na vizazi ili kuondoa na, na, na umaskini which we see kwa sababu wealth is like poverty poverty if it's not well tackled can be intergenerational as well what okay in health umaskini 
kwa sababu ya dependence ratio you have one person working 10 people dependent and then probably huyu mtu mmoja anashindwa kufanya savings so every money that you earn you have to spend on the on the 10 people that depend on you you fail to to save if you can't save you can invest if you can't invest you cannot overcome poverty over time so the poverty becomes uh, uh, becomes intergenerational as well so wealth can be intergenerational as well if it is well planned naomba ni shia hapa kama kuna maswali uh, na na wakaribisha uh, unaweza uka, uka unmute kauliza au unaweza pia uka ukaandika kwenye kwenye chat box karibuni What am I supposed to do now? Karibuni, unanisikia? Au tunakusikia? tunakusikia okay na um, nashukuru sana kwa kwa presentation uh, presentation e fupi lakini uh, imeja a lot of stuff uh, in relation to family business um, um, and you have talked from the experience so it is very good kwa ongoing business family business lakini pia if you want to start up then you know what how you can arrange yourself na kila kitu. Kwa hiyo tunashukuru sana kwa hilo. Maybe uh, one question kwamba uh, kwa 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 experience yako kwa Tanzania hapa kwa mfano uh, kama mtu angekuuliza kitu kimoja critical ambacho kinaweza kikasababisha business uh, iweze ku survive over many generations what can you say? Kitu kikubwa mimi nafikiri ni structure ya hiyo how the business is structured kwa katika maana ya kwamba kama nilivyosema pale mwanzo uh, biashara huwa zinakuwa zinachukua sura tofauti katika katika utengenezaji wake biashara inaweza ikaanzishwa kama sole proprietor kwa maana yule yule owner akawa yeye ndio decision maker akawa yeye ndio kila kitu lakini biashara pia inaweza kawa structured kama partnership lakini partnership changamoto yake ni kwamba wale ambao ni partners kwenye hiyo hiyo biashara usika wanaweza wakafilisiwa pia uh, in case of uh, in case of that event. Kwa hiyo structure ambayo naongelea mimi ni uh, a corporation. So kusajili kampuni limited company uh, by shares. Hivi structure hiyo kwanza kichwa kwanza kikubwa ni you protect assets za kampuni from individuals. Kwa hata kama family members wanataka kutumia vibaya zile assets, unaweza kwa protect hiyo kwa kutumia uh, veil ya corporate kuwafanya wale wasitumie vibaya zile mali za kampuni. Lakini pili ni rais ile biashara kuidhifisha kwenye kizazi kijacho kwa sababu shares ziko transferable. Uh, tofauti na, na muundo mwingine ambao hauko transferable. Kwa hii ni from the structural point of view. Kama if the business is not well structured, hata kama maeneo maeneo mengine ni mazuri, then there's no way uh, unaweza unaweza ukai ukaipeleka biashara to the next generation. Lakini cha in relation to that kwa sababu ninaambia kitu kimoja but in relation to that ni so lazima la the way biashara inavyokuwa planned iwe in aligned with the family goals yani family goals is interfere kwenye business na business iweze pia to serve the family goals so you need to have a very uh, a, a proper plan ya kuweza kuangalia jinsi gani una harmonize the family uh, uh, goals pamoja na, na business goals uh, naomba nijibu kwanza maswali ambayo yameandikwa kwenye kwenye chat Uh, and then to end there. Uh, uh, so bana hizi zitu. Ya tushinda. Je, unashauri muda gani ni sahihi ku incorporate biashara ndogo? Biashara ndogo kwanza in most cases when you are starting maybe year one, don't think about in, uh, cooperation. Uh, don't complicate. Uh, especially if it's just one of you if it's just one of you ambayo ndio umeanisha biashara you can start as a sole proprietor which is easy to register is easy to manage na ukaanza lakini kama mmeanza 
with more than one person. From day one, you have to incorporate. From day one, come and need more than one person. Come and need to more then you can start mwenyewe as a sole proprietor and then kama unataka kuleta mtu mwingine on board maybe after a year then unaweza ukai unaweza ukai ukai incorporate ah uh, swali nyingine uh, ni kuhusu kufungua trust in different country how uh, ni rahisi kwa sababu trust unaweza kufungua trust ndani ya nchi unaweza kufungua trust nje ya nchi ah uh, kwa nje ya nchi kwa maana gani unasajili hiyo trust katika sheria ambazo zinahusu ile nchi husika. So what you going to do is kuna makampuni in that particular country ambayo yanasaidia watu ambao wanataka kutengeneza trust kwenye hizo 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 nchi husika. Na there are tons, tons of companies. So what you can do is unaweza ukasajili trust ukiwa hapa Tanzania. So I can advise you unaweza tu kwenye Google andika tu kwamba setting a family trust chagua nchi ambayo unataka. Say Mauritius mfano. Uh, set a family trust in Mauritius and then itakuja list of companies ambazo zinasaidia watu ku set up family trust in, in, in Mauritius and then utawaandikia email they contact you na and then watakupa process zao za what type of information unatakiwa kuwatumia watakupa cost zao and if you can manage uh, uh, to do that uh, umeongelea trust kama njia ya kulinda wealth naelewa kwamba a trust ni entity nyingine kama holding company as such inakuja na gharama zake za uendeshaji ambacho sijaelewa ni inaleta protection gani zaidi ya mambo unapata kwa incorporation ya business under it. Uh, protection ambayo unaipata ni kwamba principle ya trust uh, unajua kampuni unapoanzisha zile assets ambazo ni za kampuni um, za, za wale shareholders zinapewa kwenye kampuni. Lakini haziwazuii wale shareholders kuzi access zile zile assets. Wanaweza wakaziuza uh, zile assets, wanaweza wakazimisuse zile assets lakini kwenye trust essence ya trust manake ukisha ukisha zitoa zile mali toka kwa kwa wewe ukazipeka kwenye trust huna access na zile assets tena kwa huwezi kuzimisuse zile 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 assets na normally unapoanzisha trust kuna kwa kuna malengo umejiwekea mfano unataka wewe ile trust iweze kulipa gharama za za watoto wako au jukuu zako za elimu na vitu vingine kwa yule trustee ambao ndo nampa ile trust kazi yake yeye itakuwa ni kui, kuisimamia ile trust na, kuza, na kuzalisha kipato zaidi maana kuinvest zile assets ambazo ndio za mwanzo zompa na kile kipato tunachopatikana pale kulipia zile gharama ambazo wewe umezidefine kwenye ile tunaita trust deed kwenye ile ule mkataba ambao umeingia wewe na yeye kwa hiyo inakusaidia wewe kuto uh, misuse zile assets hata kama kipindi ambapo una mahitaji ya zile assets kwa sababu tayari uh, inakuwa ni different legal structure unakuwa wewe huna direct access nayo uh, unless sababu wewe sasa uamue Uh, ku liquidate the trust uh, you, you see uh, na hiyo inatokea kwenye kwenye mfano labda kwa waislam kama mimi ukishaingiza ile trust kwenye family trust unakuwa huweza hata ku liquidate kwa you have no access to it kwa tayari inakuwa imekuprotect ime, ime wewe uh, especially the future kwa sababu kikubwa hapa tunachoangalia the future inakuwa imeprotect the future generation kupata mahitaji yao hata kama wewe ukifa hata kama wewe ukienda bankrupt uh, na kwenye taxes kwa sababu umeiset ile trust kwenye nchi ambayo ni tax efficiency manake zile assets zako haziwi as taxed na income ambayo inapatikana kule haiwi taxed kwa hiyo itaendelea kujizalisha over time uh, issue sio kukuepa kodi uh, issue sio kukuepa kodi uh, issue ni kwamba ndio maana nimesema ni tax efficiency kwamba nchi kila nchi ina utaratibu wake na mfumo wake wa kikodi Tanzania inaweza kaamua kwamba biashara za aina fulani zinapewa msamao wa kodi kama kipindi cha nyuma tunapoelewa kulikuwa kuna tax holiday kwa makampuni ya madini labda itakaa miaka mitano au zaidi bila kulipa kodi ili waweze kulikup investment zao kwa the same thing nchi zingine pia ukienda wamejiwekea utaratibu wao ili ku attract investment kwenye zile nchi husika wamejiwekea utaratibu wa wa msamaha wa kodi katika maeneo mengi mfano labda income yako wewe haitalipwa withholding tax au income yako wewe haitalipwa Uh, corporate tax. Kwa hiyo ni utaratibu tu wao nchi zile wamejiwekea. Na kama hiyo nchi ambayo unapeleka uh, trust yako ina mkataba na nchi ambayo unatokea, tunaita double taxation agreement, then uh, ukipi, ukipigwa kodi kwenye nchi moja unakuwa huwezi kupigwa kodi kwenye nchi nyingine. Kwa sio swala la kupa kodi. Wanakupa kodi of course wao wanakuwa wanaingia sawa nyingine. Je, unaweza kuweka Sibe ni mute tu. Uh, kuna issue ya je unaweza kuweka katika wasia wako kuwa mali zako na biashara zako ziweze kusimamiwa na trust 
Sasa hii nafikiri inategemea uh, naongea hivi consciously kwa sababu unajua huko ndani kuna waislamu na sokoo wa waislamu. Ukiwa Muislamu huwezi wasia wako uka protect mali zako by 100% kwa sababu sheria ya miraki inakuwala wewe I think only a portion of your wealth kwenda katika ma- mahitaji ambayo wewe unataka. You see lakini uh, the, the remaining part of your wealth kama kama kitokea sawa baada ya kufa the remaining part of your wealth lazima iende kwa wale ambao ni wa, walithi wako. Lakini kama hii mali utakao umeihamisha wewe kabla hujafa na ukao umeingiza kwenye trust then you don't need to put it katika wasia kwa sababu tayari ile trust ita protect zile assets na hazitaingia kwenye kwenye mirathi kwa sababu tayari umeshaziondosha kwenye ownership yako wewe. Uh, tuna mifano preferably local ya trust ambazo zime survive vizazi. Uh, yes zipo I'm not sure kama uh, nazijua personally sidhani kama ndio ni ziseme uh, publicly lakini zipo uh, zipo trust ambazo zime zime generations na hapo makampuni ambayo pia yameweza yame kukaa generations mfano nataka kama ukiangalia MTL sasa hivi MTL sasa hivi yuko kwenye second generation uh, uh, first generation generation imeacha second generation sasa hivi ndio is running is running the company kwa hiyo zipo trust sio nyingi zipo chache ambazo zimeweza uh, majority of them of course are, 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 are Indians uh, ambazo mimi I know of. Um swali lingine kwa swali uko juu unachindwa kwenda. Uh, ah okay. Jebu kongela kuna maswali ambayo ah uh, okay sawa. Kuna swali linasemaje? Is it possible to record the session and, sh- and share of of course in the recording and share uh, the link uh, kitu cha pili usisahau kutuma presentation nitawatumia uh, so please you can i don't know uh, whichever way you got the invitation to this. You can uh, the presentation unaweza ukaishare hapo kwenye file sasa hivi. Yaani hapa kwenye kwenye chat. Okay. Hapo kwenye chat chini hapo unaona kuna file kwa sababu hadi hapa inaweza ikawa chita kumfuata kila mtu au nini. Kuna kuna file pale ukiingia kwenye chat. Eh. Kwa chini kuna file pale kwa hiyo unaweza uka, uka share pale. Ili watu walio huko ndani wanaweza wakaipakua tu moja kwa moja. Uh, I'm trying to kutafuta hiyo. Ukiingia kwenye chat. Eh niko kwenye chat hapa tayari. Aha sasa mwisho pale mm. pale mwisho kabisa wa chat kwa chini ambapo unaweza ukaandika hata message Ehe. utaona kuna kisemi kimeonyesha file pale kwangu akionekana Hamna kitu kinaonyesha file pale Hamna kuna hii kasa tu ya ku type lakini hakuna sehemu imeandikwa file Juu yake kidogo Yaani juu ya hiyo kasa kabla ya kasa kwa upande wa kulia Hamna kitu file na vidoti doti vitatu Viko vidoti lakini vidoti vimeandika tu save chat. Bas kiliki kwenye hivyo vidoti. Hamna sehemu ya option hamna. Kuna merge to meeting window na options zingine tu. Hizi. Ah, file haionekani pale. Haionekani, yes. Aha. Okay. Uh, so maybe it's you know by the gun. Kwa sababu mimi naonekana hapa. Eh. Uh, so. uh, au naweza ukanitumia hapa alafu mimi nikajiweka mimi ndio nakutumia wapi nitumia ukituma hapa kwenye email yako ah ukituma hapo then naweza nikaiweka kusudi kila mtu apate okay. umeweka email yangu hapo okay. naweza nikaitumia nikaiweka tu instantly eh gmail ya yeah? Yes. Okay. Na kutumia na kwa wengi. Tulianzisha kampuni na jaribu pia kusoma ma- maswali kwa sababu muda wetu sio tuka muda ukaisha sijajibu maswali ya watu wengine. Ah, uh, sorry, let me let me send the presentation to brother wakati tunaendelea.
Uh, tunaanzisha kampuni limited by guarantee sasa hivi utaratibu umebadilika na makusudi yetu yalikuwa ni kutoa work 100%. Unaweza kutushauri nini? Uh, naweza nisiwe na ushauri mzuri sana lakini mimi wote our advices uh, kwa sababu my understanding ni kwamba the best structure ya ku, ya ku protect na kusajili wakfu ni kupitia trusteeship ambayo iko chini ya Rita. So I don't know whether you explore that option in uh, our partner. Kwa sababu mabadiliko ya sheria yanakutaka kwamba kama chini ya Blela it must be something which is uh, business related hata kama ugawani faida. Uh, NGO NGO unfortunately inafanya zile mali uh, zero to those founders ambao na kweli wamesajiliwa na nachoelewa sasa hivi sheria inatosema ni kwamba kama hii mali ya wakfu imetoka kwa watu wengine na nyinyi ni trustees tu ambao ndio mna oversee ile wakfu uh, then itabidi usajili wale wenye walokupa wewe wakfu usajili society wizara mambo ya ndani alafu inatengenezwa trust ambao wale trustees wanakuwa ndio entrusted na wale members ku oversee ile trust kwa what I would suggest kama mna watu ambao ndio umejitolea hizi wakfu mnaweza mkawa na structure ya, ya society alafu wachache wakasajiliwa kama trustees chini ya Rita ili wawe entrusted na wale members kusimamia zile kusimamia hizo mali uh, okay uh, nimeona mtu kaongelea hapa kuhusu so the talk today actually is not about trust eh <laughs> uh, ngao naona maswali mengi kuhusu trust um, but it's okay uh, as uh, asante bila hamza umeongelea Karim J Trust which is publicly known uh, i think we, we, uh, people can go and learn more for so wao uh najaribu kuangalia kama kuna swali ambayo sijalijibu uh is it okay ile shalijibu usisahau kutuma presentation isha mtumia brother ta share slides zitapatikana no doubt uh, umesema kuwa unaweza kufungua tajibu uh, good presentation asante apart from trust what are the options so other options okay cha trust ni trust ndio nimeongelea purpose yake ile ambayo trust saves ni ngumu sana kuipata from the other structure so structure nyingine itakuwa ni kufungua another holding company uh, ambayo haina tofauti sana na kampuni ile ambayo ni kampuni mama uh, may you can really share with the ppt sawa tayari what's the cost of having trust local ukitaka kufungua trust local kama unataka kutumia option ya rita i think ni be rahisi tu you can go to rita na few unaweza kupata maelezo mazuri zaidi uh, tunaomba presentation tuchelewa ku join tayari nisha share salu mots your email uh, ndaandika hapa email yangu chini kwenye chat if anyone wants to contact me by email nishaandika hapo chini Uh, who appoint the board members of the trust wale wenye mali kwa sababu trustees kazi yao ni ku sasa hapa nitegemea tuongee trust aina gani if it's family uh, if it's the family yule mwenye mali sasa kama ni, ni kama kama assets ambazo zinatolewa from the family business zinaenda kwenye trust ni za all family members wale family members ndio watamchagua yule uh, 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 members ambao wataenda trustee and then trustee anaweza katengeneza board uh, sio lazima na kama unaongelea unaongelea trust kwa maana hizi za wakfu ambao tunaziona barabarani uh, then wale members wenyewe ambao wenye mali wanaweza wakachagua uh, nani wawe trustees na wale trustees wakatengeneza board of trustees uh, naomba nisiende sana pale uh, SSD academy matoa course ya kuwezesha managers wa business ku structure na kuanza system ya kurani business yes tunafanya uh, nimetuma email yangu hapa you can send Uh, you are your request tukaendelea na maongezi privately uh, habari ya mchana tuna mpango wa kuanzisha kampuni ya kifamilia nini wazo lako kati ya kufungua corporate au partnership ipi nzuri zaidi uh, i would suggest you go for for a corporate structure ni is more uh, legally protective itawasaidia kuwa protect na vitu vingi itawasaidia kuwa protect na liabilities yoyote ambayo inaweza kutokana na kampuni Uh, ini raisi ku transfer shares for the next generation uh, kwa hiyo nashauri mtumie corporate structure kwa maana ya kusaidia ku incorporate kampuni badala ya kutumia partnership kumetokea ugomvi katika familia in the way unavyoendelea unavyoendelea unaweza kuua kampuni what are the best way to handle ugomvi 
Kwa hiyo kwenye kwenye issue ya ya disputes za za kamp, za ugomvi katika familia sasa sasa sijui kama ugomvi unahusiana na kampuni he, uh, then there are many ways you can do that kwa sababu kampuni normally ina njia zake za ku handle disputes uh, unaenda kwenye board na board kama kwenye board ya mwelewani you can call in an independent advisor akawashauri kama ni issues to do with finances you can call in an financial expert akawashauri kama ni legal issues you can call in a lawyer akawashauri how to go about disputes kama imeshindikana you can go to arbitration uh, na few lawyers wanaweza kushauri vizuri zaidi uh, na ikifika muda kwamba haiwezekani kabisa uh, ku solve conflict zilizopo uh, then kama mlisajili kama kampuni then mtatumia utaratibu wa sheria ya makampuni uh, ya I think ya mwaka 2022 ambayo inaelezea ma, masuala haya na jinsi ya ku ya ku liquidate kampuni ili kila mtu sasa apate asset kama zitabaki na, ku, na kuenda njia yake kama itafika to that extent otherwise i still strongly suggest uh, kwamba mtafute uh, watu wa nje kuwashauri kwenye jinsi ya kuhandle hizo disputes kwa sababu mara nyingi ugomvi na ugomvi mwingine yanaweza yakatatulika technically uh, mimi nimeshakuwa involved sana kwenye issue hizi na masuala mengine tu yalikuwa yanahitaji watu kuelezewa na kuweka mifumo mizuri na kukubaliana Uh, way forward ile kampuni na ugomvi unaisha. Uh, zingine zinahitaji lawyer akashauri uh, you know vingine of course visa vikahitaji kufaya some people ambao kwenye biashara. Kwa hiyo nashauri kwamba seek advice uh, ya watu. Uh, you can contact me kama ni maeneo ambayo yako within my expertise I can advise. Kama ni masuala ya kisheria I can strongly recommend utafute lawyer uh, kawasaidia uh, especially lawyer ambaye ni, ni corporate lawyer ambaye anaelewa masuala ya kampuni. Um, huwa inasema wahindi ni wazuri kutoka mipango za session kwenye biashara kuliko Afrika. Kwa uzoefu wako wapi tunakosea? <laughs> uh, I don't know to be honest, sina majibu ya, ya, ya moja kwa moja lakini mimi ukiniuliza tu generally nitakwambia kwamba biashara nyingi zinaanza pasipo kuwa na plans. Yaani biashara zinaanza mtu anajua mara nyingi tunajua biashara the business normally starts small. Mtu anaanza tu kidogo Uh, and then anakuwa a oversee what will happen in the future anaenda ile biashara inakuwa to the extent kwamba biashara ina more to grow biashara ki more to grow anaanza sasa kuleta family members kumsaidia ku run that business and then the f- anaanza baadaye kuanza kuwaleta family members na kuanza kuingiza kwenye management and sometimes kwenye ownership lakini wanakuwa wameingia katika msingi ambao sio mzuri kwa sababu hapakuwa na proper structure mwanzoni then uh, mwisho siku uh, ile biashara inashindwa kuweka mazingira ya ya kuweza ku nominate will be the next so kila mtu anajiona kama viko entitled lakini pili nafikiri ni culture i don't know maybe ni culture tu ya ya sisi kutokuwa na utaratibu wa ku plan will be will be the next year nafikiri ni utamaduni uh, i don't know i tend to be corrected uh, wenzetu unajua mfano kama savings savings na ambia watu siku nyingi kwamba savings is not the is not the, is not the function of of income saving mara nyingi is a function of culture kama una, una utamaduni wa kuweka akiba Uh, then hata kama unataka a company utaendelea pia kuweka akiba uh, so the same thing comes to succession planning kama familia nyingi hazina utaratibu uh, na maybe probably generation ambazo zimetupeta za wazazi wetu walikuwa hawana utaratibu wa ku wa ku involve watu wengine kwenye maamuzi hawakuwa na utaratibu wa ku involve other members kwenye maamuzi ya kampuni wakiamini kwamba wao ndo kila kitu nafikiri hiyo culture ndio imefanya tushinde kuwa na tushinde kuwa na utaratibu mzuri wa kufanya succession planning Uh, kwa hiyo i don't know other factors lakini easy quickly if you ask me i can i can say kama zinachangia kutokuwa na mipango mizuri ya succession kwa hiyo the best way ni uh, ni kuwa na succession plan ambayo it can be technically structured na ikawasaidia for your future uh sijui kama kuna swali lingine kama amna uh, tufunge session yetu ya leo uh, ile presentation tayari nimesha share Asante na shukrani sana brother. Uh, ya yeah, rafika rafika kitu kimoja ile email yako ambayo watu wameomba mm. kama vile sioni kwa everyone kama unaweza ukaishia tena au nimeshare vibaya. Yaani kama mimi sioni it means labda labda umetuma kwa mtu labda. Inawezekana. Badala ya everyone. Okay, inawezekana. Kati na tumu unaweza kusema everyone kusudi iende okay. kwa kila mtu. Nimekupata. Brother Salim. Naam naam. Salamu alaykum. Uh, mimi labda nilitoka nili kidogo. 
nilikwenda uh, msikitini sasa kuna kitu na mwisho mwisho nakipata mm. swala la succession wakati kuna swala wanasema trust na kuna swala kwamba katika Uislamu kuna issue ya warithi mm. na mali na, inatakiwa kurithiwa yaani ukishakufa mali inatakiwa kurithiwa mm. na sijui kama ulipata fursa kuiongelea hapo au labda in out of scope ya discussion Uh, ni sema kwamba hii haiko kwenye scope discussion ya leo maybe mm. uh, kama mtapendekeza wiki tunaweza tukatengeneza session nyingine ambayo kuna maeneo mengine mimi sina expertise sana ni ya kisheria ambayo probably tunaweza I can bring on board mtu ambaye ni sheria scholar akatusaidia kwenye masuala hayo kama kuna issues za namna hiyo lakini as far as i know kwa elimu yangu ndogo ni kwamba uh, kuna kuna mali ambayo imeshaingia kwenye trust Uh, ai haiwezi kuingia kwenye mirathi na hiyo ndio kifanyika kabla hujafa uh, kwa maana unaiondoa ile mali mapema uh, ili utakapokufa ile ambayo itakuwa haiko kwenye trust iliingia kwenye mirathi lakini naomba utosheke na, na majibu ya UU na kama kutakuwa kuna request then we will see tunaweza tukaorganize uh, next discussion ya ya mamasala ya family work kwa sababu wakfu nyingi ambazo zinaongelewa hapa ni public work Uh, lakini watu wengi sana hawaongelei masuala ya family work na with respect to masuala ya mirathi i'll take that into consideration na tutaangalia kama hizo tukaorganize uh, session kushirikiana na watu wengine wataalamu wa sifka na tukaleta hiyo hiyo session next Uh, najaribu kutoa hapa privately ende publicly lakini naona kama vile Imesha tumesha ipokea iko sawa Okay haya asante nashukuru It is fine okay. It's going to everyone Asante nashukuru kaka uh, kuna swali lingine Basi nashukuru ndugu zangu kwa ku participate kwenye session hii ya leo au kuna mtu anaongea uh, la, Labda uh, labda na sisi Naam labda na sisi kama participants uh, kwa sababu basically this is like um, uh, like public lecture ambapo you know we don't give you anything lakini mm. umeona kwamba hiki kitu ni, ni muhimu sana kwa family business ni muhimu sana kwa social economic development ya nchi yetu hiyo tunakushukuru sana pamoja na wenzako kwa kufikiria kufanya hivi na usisite kupanua zaidi ukiona kwamba na namna ya kupanua kutegemeana na maswali ambayo yameulizwa hapo basi tutakuwa tayari kuendelea kuendelea na wewe ili tuendelee kuona namna ambavyo hizi family business uh, kama ulivyosema ni pasenti kubwa ya ya, ya, ya utumi wa nchi lakini wa dunia pia kwa hiyo na sisi na sisi huko Afrika tuna pasenti moja kwa hiyo nadhani inabidi tuwe nguvu zaidi kuona kwamba hii family business inaweza ika contribute zaidi kwa uchumi wa nchi lakini pia na kwa kuboresha familia zetu. Asante asante sana kwa moyo huo. Asante kaka nashukuru sana kwa niaba ya, ya participant wengine. Jamani nashukuru sana uh, thanks for your time nashukuru kwa muda wenu. Uh, tuendelea kufanya sessions kama hizi at least mara moja kila mwezi kwenye zile mada ambazo na hisi ziko relevant. Uh, kuna vitu vingi sana ambavyo watu wengi wanabidi wafahamu kuna masuala ya personal finance kuna masuala ya investment kuna masuala ya kuyakuza biashara uh, kuna masuala ya changamoto za ukuzaji wa biashara zetu uh, kwa hiyo uh, Mungu akipenda tutashare the next topic uh, na tuta distribute kama nilivyofanya kwenye mitandao ya jamii na kwenye WhatsApp groups uh, na, na, na tarehe ijayo ndio tutakutana tena asanteni na natakia siku njema